Hey y'all, Melissa here at Twin Oaks Family Farm in rural Southeast Ohio, USA. Thanks for joining me on our YouTube channel, Twin Oaks Farm Poultry. Do you wanna see the meat chickens that we currently have in production? Can't wait to show you. We are actually in the meat bird production barn, also known as a food factory, because this is where real good chicken is made. Remember, real good chicken only comes from real chickens raised with good livestock management practices. And we love to show you our management practices for raising Cornish Rock Cross meat chickens here at our small poultry farm. We can take them from start through grow to finish in five or six weeks to produce excellent poultry. And you can take the same management practices that we use and raise your own chickens if you're interested in doing that. If you're not interested in doing that, we hope that this inspires you to connect to a farmer, producer, rancher in your area where you live to source your chicken and your other meats and your produce and your dairy, as much of your food as you possibly can directly from the producer. Part local ag. That means support local ag wherever local is for you. Before we take a look at this flock, I do want to mention a couple things. We really appreciate our subscribers. Thank you so much. We started our YouTube channel around February of 2023. Because of y'all, it's been able to grow to a thousand plus subscribers since then. We're so excited about that. Reaching a thousand plus subscribers was a goal that we had in the beginning and we've worked at it. We've tried to work at it with some consistency and a routine and was showing you what it's really like on a small independent family run poultry farm raising meat chickens. So we wanna share that with you, the routine of that, the demands of that, the frustrations of that, and the little triumphs in that. So we love to be able to share it with you on this platform. We also now have the opportunity by invitation from YouTube to offer memberships to our channel where we can try to give a little bit of extra content, extra posts, extra shorts, extra videos, to people that choose to purchase a membership. Those purchase memberships will help us be able to continue to work toward video content projects through our YouTube channel and on-farm projects right here at our small poultry operation. So we appreciate you giving that some consideration. There are different categories and we are trying to get onto a routine of lining up the perks that are offered with the category descriptions that's uh, the expectation between YouTube toward the creator that, that we'll try to do that diligently. So press the join button under the video. Pressing the join button doesn't commit you, but it gives you the opportunity to scroll through that information and see the membership information. And we hope that you will consider it. But do you wanna see the meat chickens? Absolutely, sure thing. Let's take a look. So we're actually in the barn right now doing some choring, some chicken checking and chicken checking happens frequently. We also have egg production chickens. We keep them year round and we check on them frequently as well, about four times a day, but we check on the meat chickens much more frequently. And I can honestly tell you from experience, meat chickens are much more work, much higher maintenance, more labor intensive, and more expense involved than with your egg production chickens. So if you're going to raise meat birds, be prepared for that. You can reach kind of a comfort zone and kind of a maintenance threshold where uh, your resources and the size of your space for your birds and the number of birds you raise, if you get it all matched up really well, you can kind of reach a point where the maintenance with the meat birds becomes routine and isn't overwhelming, but still the underlying reality is meat birds are much more work on a daily basis than egg production birds, okay? Now on the flip side though, like I said, we have our egg production birds year round. When we buy chicks for egg production, we're gonna to have to feed and raise and care for those hens maybe five, six, seven months, four months minimum for certain breeds, but four to seven or eight months, depending on the breed, before they even start to produce eggs. 
So that's kind of like a marathon. You know, and then you can keep those birds that are laying eggs for you like two or three years, at least probably, and get consistent, reliable egg production out of them. So I kind of see the egg production chickens as kind of like a marathon project. Now, on the other hand, with meat birds, this is kind of like a sprint. We can go start to finish with meat chickens truly in 42 days or as little as possibly 35 days, okay? So the production length with your meat birds is going to directly impact how much food you can get in them and how much food you can get in them is directly going to impact what size finished bird, like in terms of say you, you process them into whole chickens that you put in the freezer. So that's, it's going to have a direct impact on what size bird you're going to end up with. So you can somewhat customize or tailor your production length to the size finished chicken you want, like in your freezer. But in general, with these Cornish Rock Cross meat chickens, really six weeks is ideal for getting about a five and a half to six pound finished frozen whole chicken in the freezer. If you allow the birds to have feed 24 seven, round the clock, always available to them. And if you encourage them to make the threshold of eating about average 10 pounds of feed per bird in your production length. So if you accomplish that with the birds, 10 pounds of feed per bird average during your production length, which is probably going to take you six to seven weeks possibly with letting them have access to feed round the clock. But if, if you can kind of meet those parameters, you should be able to finish with definitely five to six pound whole frozen chickens, okay? So what are we doing right now for chicken checking? Well, this is around midday. This is August 14th, 2024. These birds are in day 21 of production, okay? So they're in a growing phase. We're looking forward to them being in the finish phase. We are seeing a lot of growth in their overall size, but I think we're also starting to see some of the birds approaching the finish stage where we're seeing like the feed to meat conversion and starting to see, for example, the chicken breasts fill out, okay? So Cornish Rock Cross Meat Chickens distribute meat primarily to the chicken breast, the drumstick, and the thigh. And the closer the birds get to the finish, to the end of production, the more rapidly they convert feed to meat and the more rapidly they fill out in those areas. So that's why we say, like right now, these birds still look to us like we would consider them in what we call the growing phase, where a lot of the energy from the feedstuffs is going into like their skeletal structure and supporting the function of their internal organs and their immune system and thermoregulation and still going toward feather production feathers, we've said this before on this channel, are about 91% protein. These birds are feathering in well. So all of this is happening to gear up for the finish stage where these birds are really going to fill out because they're going to convert the feed to meat that's going to go on their frame. And, and that's when we're going to really see them just start to look kind of gigantic. So, <laughs> So at any rate, it is really amazing. We see them every day, multiple, multiple times a day. So uh, it, to us, sometimes we feel like, are they growing? Are they eating enough? Is, is there any change in the size at all? Are they, are they filling out? But then when we get toward the end of production, we see it you know, really pick up rapidly and, and we can notice it. But I do have to remind myself, it is amazing like even, even looking at these birds as we have some eating, some resting, some going to water. You know, when they arrived here, they were the size of a chicken egg. They were the size of a chicken egg just three weeks ago. So they have grown tremendously and they grow much faster than egg production breeds. Even your large, heavy bodied egg production breeds, for example, Orpingtons. An Orpington at, at the same age 
standing side by side profile with these birds looks tiny. These birds look like giants compared to them. If you could get two birds same age together and compare meat birds and egg production birds. So anyway, so what we're looking at now, as I said, this is midday. So uh, we've already made sure, you know, earlier in the day that there's lots of feed in the feeders, waters were filled up. The water trays were cleaned at that time. As the day goes on, they kick some of the bedding material into the, the water trays. We will clean those again in the evening. So for right now, what we're checking overall is uh, the comfort of the ambient conditions in the pen. So mostly in that regard, thinking of ambient temperature and uh, any place where like direct sun is coming in, do we need to close any of the big doors and adjust for that? In this case, uh, the temperature is fairly mild. We're still around the low 80s, 80 degrees Fahrenheit. And that's really what this age of meat chicken wants. So I'm, and they've got plenty of floor space too. So we're gonna let, we're gonna let the big doors stay open because that's given us a lot of great airflow, okay? So that's, that's one thing we're checking, the ambient conditions involving several factors. Uh, the other thing we're checking is their activity level. So I actually have already been, I'm walking up behind these birds and that's why they're moving. And we, I actually have already been through here like a couple of laps and ask these birds to walk around. So they've had some activity here just in the last half hour. And we saw a lot of them go to food and a lot of them go to water. And so after that, they do have a tendency to just rest. But we, while we're doing that, and even now walking them around, we watch for individuals and we particularly watch for any individuals that don't want to stand up or don't want to walk or refuse to move away from us. So they've kind of got compacted back here in this corner as they've walked away from me and walked into ones that were already sitting here. So I'm giving them time and still asking them to, hey, hey, let's move along. Let's make sure that everybody can walk. Let's make sure that everybody can stand up and bear weight on their legs. Because if we come onto a bird that cannot walk or can't stand up, or refuses to move, we're going to pay extra close attention to that bird. We might even do some intervention practices, like put them in a, a pen uh, with just a few other birds and see if they can improve in their mobility. Because we don't want a bird that is struggling to move around in here having to compete with all these other birds. Any guesses how many birds are here? Uh, give you a few more moments on that to kind of maybe try to guess at least to yourself how many birds we're looking at and then I'll tell you but uh, but we do we pay special attention to how are they moving so that's why like every every maybe couple hours a person from our household will physically come in here and just move the birds around and again here we kind of got a little glut little compaction here of quantity of birds just because when you walk around you know they all kind of go to the same place so but you can see as we moved them around it encourages a lot of them to go back to the feeder go to the water stay hydrated stay full and let the digestive system work on some feed and so that's what we want to see okay so we are we are really watching mobility though uh, and when we do that it's accomplishing also for us not only are we having an opportunity to identify any individuals in the flock that are weak or need some help but at the same time we're helping all of the birds gain leg strength because they're getting exercise they're having to bear weight on their legs. We don't want to over exercise them, but we need these legs to stay strong because we talked about they were the size of a chicken egg when they moved in. And for this group, that was July 25th, 2024. And by the time they are, you know, about five or six weeks old, 
with Cornish rock cross meat chickens. You may have birds that are seven and a half, eight pounds or more, possibly, if conditions were just super and, and they ate a lot and they grew really fast. So those legs, those little legs, have to go from holding up a little chicky to holding up a finished meat chicken. So it can be a strain on them. So during production, we want to keep the legs really strong. So we do really want to see them. We want to see them circled up at feeders before we before we start to wrap it up. That's the situation on feed is we have a total of 4,000 pounds of feed that we want in them from July 25th to August 28th. So that was their hatch date to their processing date. So uh, we are, you know, about 20 days in. So with this group and their production length, we're a little over halfway. And we're just now finishing half of the feed. So in one sense, that makes us a little nervous. Like, are we going to get all the feed in them? Um, we're running out of time. The timetable is super short. We're running out of time. But on the other hand, we also know that as meat birds finish, their appetite increases and they eat more and more because they're growing faster. So they need to consume more food to support the growth. So most likely, most likely it's going to be fine. Most likely we're still going to get all the feed in them that we need to. And, and why is that number so important to us? Because we know that on average to successfully finish a Cornish rock cross meat chicken, we probably need to get 10%, I'm sorry, we probably need to get 10 pounds of feed into each bird. So when we knew we were raising a little over 400, then uh, we knew we could figure, well, 4,000 pounds of feed should, we should be able to get 4,000 pounds of feed in them, and that's what it should take to finish them. So, uh, so there's, there's the answer to that question, how many are in this group? There's 426 in this flock right now. We did start with 433. We hope that we don't lose any more. That's, that's really excellent rate of, uh, of flock survival right now. 426 out of 433 is really good. Our processing appointments for 400, but if we have more than 400 in that range, you know, like 400 to 426, our processor will take them with, with no, no problems. So, so we're good shape on that, but let's see. The other thing I want to finish up with, the other thing we're always looking at, and if y'all are raising Cornish rock cross meat chickens, keep paying attention to it. The other thing we're always looking at is what's the floor like underneath them? What's the floor like underneath them? Well, uh, we use a deep litter method. So basically we just keep putting new fresh bedding on top of the old bedding that they've used and, and that the manure load is on and that has gotten saturated. So this, that's underneath them now is well used. It's some of it starting to pack down kind of tight, uh, kind of get a, almost a slick look, smooth look on top. So we know that they're, especially over here, they spend a lot of time over here. So they have pretty well maxed out the capacity of that bedding material to hold the manure load. So we are now at the point where we want to put some fresh bedding down. So we're going to actually be taking care of that today, sourcing more fresh bedding and putting some of it down in the pen. Uh, this, this group though has really been efficient on bedding material. We've only used three bales of pine shavings for this flock because uh, what they're on right now had actually already been built up from other flocks and it had a little bit of rest between this flock and the previous one. And we actually brought a tiller, a walk behind tiller in here. And my husband actually tilled up the bedding that was here previously. And that loosened it and aerated it and put fresh bedding that had been underneath. It turned it up to being on top. So that gave this flock essentially new bedding to start on when we let this flock into this space. And uh, now they've pretty well saturated it. So we need, to, we need to add more bedding for them. And then we'll be able to keep it conditioned and that will help when we get to the next flock. Because right after this flock leaves, 
Woo, another flock of 400 some going to move in within about a week after this group heads out. So, hey, put any questions you've got down in comments. Thanks for joining us. You know, we appreciate you supporting our channel. We sure hope, genuinely, genuinely sure hope that you are supporting farmers, ranchers, and producers where you live, trying to source your food as locally as possible. Hope you're, you're raising what you're able to, but like I said, if that's not in your resources or not in the season of life, please seek out farmers and producers where you live and uh, nothing is more rewarding for a farmer that produces a food product than to be able to connect directly with the customer that's going to consume it and enjoy it. So thanks y'all. Thanks for joining us. Oh, got to go help one. This one actually jumped the fence, if you can imagine that. So I'll need both hands to direct that one back over here and scoop it up gently and help it get back inside with its flock. So we will call it a day. Look, there goes another one. Hopefully it's not going to go out. I was going to press stop, but thought y'all might like to see that once I noticed them jumping out. So we're going to actually try to turn this one. You guys are fine. Oh, there it went. Okay, so I'm going to try to get these two. Don't know if I'll be able to record that or not, but rest assured, we're going to return them to the flock. Let me tell you why this happens. So in here, I told you about that deep litter bedding method. So we've added bedding to that over like three flocks previous to this one. And now the bedding in here is built up to the point that from this side, so from this side, the bedding on the other side of the wall is about that deep. So they can jump up from this side and make it up here. But once you get over here, it's actually more distance from the floor to the top of the short wall. They end up finding that they can't jump up here. <laughs> so, so we got to help them. So thanks, y'all. We appreciate you. And I hope you'll check back in with us. Please give the video a thumbs up and any comments you want to put there. We love to read your feedback. Thanks so much. God bless you.